glycerol and hyperhydration. What we're going to go through today is basically how researchers recommend or at least how much glycerol they utilized in their studies to get the desired results. It's usually going to range between 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight or 1.5 uh, grams of glycerol per total body water volume. Now keep in mind, we're going to look at the researchers and how it actually came into be or how it came into light and what they discovered. Now often, when you type in glycerol, let's say in a regular Google search, and you type in glycerol and heat endurance or glycerol and fighting heat exhaustion, always, inevitably, one of the first five items that come up is a research article from 1998 in the Journal of Applied Physiology, which basically came to the conclusion that glycerol had no impact, which is unfortunate because the majority of the studies throughout time show glycerol had a tremendous impact in hyperhydration. Now remember, research has to be duplicated. And the one study called Hyperhydration Tolerance, Cardiovascular Effects During Uncompensable Exercise Heat Stress has not been duplicated as far as I know in any peer-reviewed journals. These studies in regards to glycerol and hyperhydration have especially obviously again in extreme environments. Now let's go to the first one. The first one's important because it explains to you how glycerol may do what it does. And remember I'm saying glycerol not glycerin. Huge difference. All right back in 1995 glycerol hyperhydration hormonal renal, renal and vascular fluid responses also in the Journal of Applied Physiology. What they found out in their research is that glycerol doesn't really affect hormones as much as the antidiuretic effect. They came to the hypothesis that glycerol may impact water reabsorption to the kidneys, meaning your body holds and retains that water longer. Not like tortilla chip water or salty foods and things like that, but in the muscle and in the fluids itself. Now this is what happened. They went by the total body water volume and did one and a half grams of glycerol per liter of total body water volume. The glycerol resulted in what they say greater retention. These are just individuals sitting around doing nothing. This is not people actually exercising. They wanted to find out how glycerol did the job first, so keep that in mind. What they found out after three hours, the glycerol group retained water, not in a bad way, 60% versus the water only group only retained 32% of the fluids. So 60% water retention in the glycerol group, 32% water retention in the water only group. And that's where they came to the conclusion it may work positively through the kidneys to help with water reabsorption. Again, glycerol, not glycerin. Which brings us to the next study back in 1987 through the Journal of Applied Physiology saying hyperhydration with glycerol solutions. Now we get to come to more of how to take it when it comes to body weight which is not going to be as accurate as total body water volume. Now keep in mind, these guys utilized also too, to digress, 37 milliliters of water per uh, liter of total body water volume. Keep in mind that's important because the exact same amount used here. But to the second study, one and a half grams of glycerol per kilogram of body weight is what they utilized. And they added about 21.4 milliliters per kilogram of NaCl, uh, sodium chloride, which is really just junk salt. And they had them ingested over three and a half hours. A group with glycerol added to the salty water and a group without. Remember, salt's going to help with water retention too, but keep this in mind. Over the salt water only group, the plasma osmolality lasted for about two hours in the glycerol group and they had decreased urine flow for about four hours. Keep the four hours in mind. That's what we're looking for about the average impact glycerol is going to help you in dealing with either extreme heat or extreme cold. So it helped with four hours, most likely through helping with water reabsorption. Researchers came to the conclusion that this produces hyperhydration for at least four hours. It's important because I know a lot of you guys that train hard and they go into back country don't have the luxury of basically finding water. So hyperhydration plays a huge role. Then we go to the performance aspect. And this is kind of cool. This was done in 2002, the International Journal of Sports uh, Nutrition Exercise and Metabolism. 
the effect of glycerol hydra hyperhydration on Olympic distance triathlon performance in high ambient temperatures, meaning it's really hot in scientific terms. So this is what they utilized. They went by kilogram of body weight. 1.2 grams of glycerin per kilogram of body weight for about 25 milliliters of water, 0.75 grams times the kilograms mixed in with a carb solution. So they mixed their glycerol with the carb solution, which may help the impact. The carb solution in this study was Gatorade. So take it for what it's worth. They had them drink the glycerol substance or fluid over 60 minutes. So they had them drink it slowly. Two hours prior to the event, not one hour prior to this one study that was found to be ineffective, but two hours prior to the event. And basically what they called OTT training, basically they ran a triathlon again in high temperatures. Now here's where the performance advantage came out. They had a placebo group which just did water with no, and water with a carbohydrate solution with no glycerol. And of course they had the glycerol group. In the high temperatures, the glycerol group only was penalized about one and a half minutes in performance. The placebo group without the glycerol were about 11 minutes slower in the high, or actually 11.47 minutes slower, 11 minutes and 47 seconds in the high ambient temperatures. So basically, in layman's term, the group that took the glycerol and during the triathlon in high temperature finished 10 minutes faster than the placebo group who just did water and carbohydrate solution. Again, 1.2 grams of glycerin, glycerol per kilogram of body weight. And that they found out also, which was interesting, that the glycerol group performed best in the last 10 kilometers of the race. So maybe through the hyperhydration and going that much further because the placebo group would have been dehydrated by that time, but the glycerol group being hyperhydrated had a distinct advantage, especially in high ambient temperatures or hot. So glycerol has been repeated over and over again as far as being effective in high temperatures. Now the one interesting study also as far as extremes and cold was published in 2005 Journal of Applied Physiology called Glycerol Hyperhydration Physiological Responses During Cold Air Exposure, otherwise known as CAE, Cold Air Exposure. They took a group and they exposed them to 15 degrees centigrade for four hours, which is interesting because four hours, if you see, comes up a lot in about the average amount of time that glycerol seems to have its impact. So the four hours of cold exposure, 15 degrees centigrade for 30% humidity. The glycerol group retained their fluids, 38% of the fluids, after four hours that they ingested. The water only group only retained 18%, leading the researchers to come to the conclusion, or I should say hypothesis, that glycerol can be an effective hyperhydrating agent in cold air exposure. Now what they did again, they used 37 milliliters of water per liter of total body water volume. So that 37 milliliters that you see come up that they used in the first study here, came up here again. And 37 milliliters, it comes out to about, if you look at it, it's about one and a half liters of solution. So the average individual, probably anywhere from 60, 65% body water, uh, 70 kilogram adult is gonna be in about 42 liters of water volume. And basically it's gonna come out to about one and a half liters of solution or that much glycerol added to whatever they're drinking. Now keep in mind also too, for those in metrics, one in 150 pound man will weigh about 68 kilom kilometers, kilograms, which means the average individual when looking at a certain amount of glycerol is gonna be taking about 102 grams of glycerol. Sounds like a lot, but let's take, let's put it in perspective. 48 ounce soda has up to about 128 grams of sugar. So 102 grams of glycerol, which is very sweet tasting, uh, compared to 128 grams of sugar, well, that gives you an idea as far as how it weighs out with things in the normal world. So in conclusion, the research tends to validate over and over again that glycerol does have a very positive effect in hyperhydration. We did not go into how it may lower heart rate, how it may reduce core body temperature. 
We didn't want to get involved in that, but if you'd like me to, I can. But as far as its hyperhydrating effect in temperature extremes, whether it be hot or cold, it seems to be pretty well validated. If you want to research it yourself, seriously, one of my favorite research sites out of all is PubMed, the U.S. National Library of Medicine of National Institutes of Health. Just type in glycerol and heat and just keep on following those links you'll see on the right column. It's in read the reviews. It's eye-opening. You're probably only going to get the abstracts. Abstracts. You're not going to get into the real detail of the full text. But still, it will do a lot to validate and build your confidence in glycerol. One of my favorite supplements. Helps me go a long time in high heat. Thanks once again. Ralph Turchiano, signing off.